I have three primaries. They're not necessarily primaries I would always reach for, but I can make any three primaries work for mixing a flesh tone. So um, I'm going to start with quinacridone crimson. I have the yellow medium azo, and I have indanthrine blue, which is a pretty dark blue and very strongly tinted, but you don't need a lot of it. So this is good because since I'm not used to mixing these colors, you'll see my trial and error because you know, first of all, I don't mix flesh tones very often. <laughs> and secondly, um, I, I don't use these colors together that often. But I'm going to mix an orange. And I usually start with a darker orange. So I'm going to mix an orange base. Can you see that okay? Okay, I think that's still too red. It's, yeah, it needs to be much more of an orange. So we're going to go ahead and add. One thing too I recommend when mixing colors, when you start adding more colors in, sometimes I would just say leave the base color, the original color, and then you get what I call a trail of color because have you ever tried to mix a color and then you got off track and you couldn't find your way back through the forest? So you leave your breadcrumb, you leave your trail of color because then you can abandon one track if it didn't work out and say, oh, but I was doing great like three steps back. Let me go back there. Okay, so we're just gonna leave some of the base color and start trying to make that a, um, yeah, more orange. So we want kind of like a deep orange to start with. Would you guys call that a deep orange? Yeah. It's kind of a red orange, I guess. You know, if you're looking on the color wheel, there's straight orange, there's red orange, there's yellow orange. So we want a red orange on the color wheel. Okay, so now, we need to tone that down with a little bit of blue. And when I say a little, I mean a little tiny bit. We're gonna use what I call a flick of blue. So um, I try and just start, and especially because I mentioned this is a strong tinting strength, I'm gonna just be really, see look, that's changed so much. Wow, God, that was a lot of blue. <laughs> but look at this gorgeous brown we're getting, okay? This is, I'm on track. Pretty good for someone who hasn't done this in a long time. Okay, I love that color. That is gorgeous. Okay, I love it, I'm so happy. Okay, so we can see this is an awesome basis for a skin tone. Now, if you've got a model in front of you and you're trying to match their skin tone, you then look at them and say, okay, this person has a little more red, this person has a little more yellow. You can adjust it, right, <laughs> by looking at the person. What I do, if you're working from a model, are you talking about working from yeah. Okay, yeah, so what I do is I take the color and you get it on the back of the knife like so and then you hold it up against the person and you kind of squint and I can like look around and see if this would match anybody in this room. It's a little too red for pretty much everybody I'm looking at, okay? But so I would just modify it. So I don't know who I'm painting today so I'm just going to imagine, right? I'm just making it up. Okay, so um, now... Let's just say that was, let's say it's too red for everybody, so we're gonna add a little more yellow. Ah, see how warm and yummy that color is? Mmm, gorgeous. Okay, so then depending on how dark or light complexion, I would definitely recommend, this is a trick I wish I'd known when I was in art school, because I did tons of figure painting and I loved it and I had so much fun and I learned so much, but I was always using titanium white which takes any color and makes it look chalky and dull. And nobody, ha unless they're really ill, <laughs> has that kind of skin. We're all a series of layers of skin, and what's happening is in our skin, light is bouncing around because it's transparent. If you ever had a little bit of skin peel off, it's clear, right? It's not solid color. So basically, it, there's a lot of reflectivity and a lot of layers, and that's why you can't necessarily get the sky by adding a lot of white or skin by adding a lot of white. So I recommend um, Liquitex makes this transparent mixing white, or you can use any brand of zinc white. It's a different pigment than titanium. So we're going to add this in to lighten up the flesh tone and see where we're going to go with that. So I'm, I'm just taking what's on the back of the knife. That's enough for this amount. So, okay. Ooh, still too red. Look at that. Nobody looks like that. Hey, Michelle, do you I do, yeah. Do you want me to show both? Yeah. Okay. Really yes, good idea. Okay. 
So we'll try. Okay, still, this is really not looking like anybody that I know. Okay, so more yellow is needed, but I have my trail. See, I can always go back, and when I've gotten it, what I'll do is I'll add it to this, and then I'll make a bigger pile. Does that make sense? So it's sort of just a strategy for getting your color and not wasting an enormous amount of paint. So we've got to add way more yellow to that. Okay, and I'm thinking a little bit more blue is in order, so I just a little dab, or a twitch as I call it, of blue might help that. Are you guys following this? Do you feel like it's, yeah. you can kind of feel it in your gut, right? Okay, we're getting somewhere towards a skin, skin-like color. Okay, so um, before I go further, I'm going to take Lisa's excellent suggestion and show you what happens if you mix the titanium white instead in there. So, we're going to take the original mixture, right, and we'll mix it up with that titanium white. First of all, a little, oops, we got some red in there, that was a mistake. First of all, a little bit of white goes a long way, right? You need more of the transparent mixing white to lighten it, um, so I'm going to have to even add more of my base color. But do you still see what I'm talking about, like that chalkiness to it? And this kind of has a little bit of a glow to it, even if I add the yellow and try and get it to that. It's not bad. I mean, there are people who painted figures with this titanium white. And, but I'm just saying, I'll, when I look back at my figure paintings from my school days, they're definitely um, on the um, chalky side. They look kind of chalky. So I prefer the transparent mixing white. Okay, so now we're going to add more of that transparent mixing white in and just show how we can... I shouldn't have been frugal, I should have just taken a new fresh palette sheet because now we have this very <laughs> messy looking palette. But that's life, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, who has a perfect palette? Okay, so we're going to go back down here with this mixture, okay? And I'm just, I'm being conservative. You can always add more and you can always adjust it. More yellow. Mm. I'm definitely seeing possibilities here. What do you guys think? So we got kind of like a range of different potential skin tones.